Yes, we are going to continue um, today with the next presentation of Maarten Bevers. He's Information Security Officer at Lies Plan. I think most Dutch people will know Lies Plan and maybe <coughs> the Belgian people who are here will know it too. And he's going to uh, discuss and talk about the human factor and usage of decentralized identities. The floor is yours. Perfect, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, first of all, thank you very much for having me today. And I think the previous presentation couldn't have been aligned more perfectly because I think it actually, well, partially answers a question which I already raised in this presentation. So uh, thank you for, uh, for answering it. <laughs> I took a photo, by the way, so I'm going to go to your boot later. Uh, yeah, so my presentation title is Strengthen the Weakest Link. And that's also what I want to cover today. Uh, the picture in the background is more than just screen filling uh, because I think this actually is the core of my entire story. Because what you see on the picture is an employee who is wearing his tie around his head. You know, he tightened it. He's in a ninja pose. Uh, and he's fighting to protect his assets. You know, he is holding the lease plan laptop in this case. He's really trying to make sure that the Trojan horse you see on the bottom, the virus, the bug, the worm, uh, the fishing rod, you know, he's being fished, uh, that he's fighting this. Because in essence, that is basically what we are asking of our employees uh, as information security professionals. We're asking them to keep out the, the bad guys. And we all might here disagree and think, well, no, we don't. You know, we are here as information security professionals to do that. But in essence, we ask them to you know, not share their passwords, do not click on certain links, do not pick up phone calls of people you don't know. Um, uh, if you have passwords, please make sure you have different ones for each every, one, every website. Um, in other words, we ask a lot of them. Uh, and in essence, we ask this, you know, fight for our assets. Whereas in reality, I think it should be a combination of them and us. So that's also what I show on the bottom. Um, how do we reduce human involvement in breaches? Because at the moment, I think there's a lot of those. Um, I'll get to that in more detail later. But before I do that, uh, I'm just going to quickly introduce myself. Uh, I'm Maarten Bevers. Uh, I currently work at Lease Plan. Uh, I'm the Corporate Information Security Officer. Very long title, as I've been remembered by Robert yesterday, um, is what it is. Um, at least plan, we see the same. I'm working in information security, and we see that there the human factor is always involved. Let's say if we have some sort of a breach or some sort of a leak, there's always a human element. Like it's someone who clicked on the wrong thing. It's someone who picked up the, the phone of someone else. It's someone who didn't see that a PDF was actually uh, not by realball.com, but something else. Um, so we see that there. Before I worked at uh, Aldo Hayes, a uh, retailing company, uh, some colleagues of mine are here as well in the identity and access management field, and also in, in identity and access management, you see the human factor in, let's say, risks that occur. So privilege creep, for instance, is something that's very human. You know, you move jobs, and you move again and again and again, uh, but you don't delete your access rights because, you know, it's so convenient that you can still access Photoshop, or you can, so convenient that you can still be in that admin portal for a little bit longer. It's so also there. The human factor is always involved, let's say, in creating risks. Uh, and next to that, I also worked in the Johan Cruyff Arena with Ajax, which uh, hopefully I won't get bombed for here, but uh, it's like, <laughs> it's what it is. Um, and I was in the uh, field of physical security. Uh, I was not a security guard myself, but security management. And also there, you see the human involvement. You know, we have so many procedures, policies, literally physical gates and locks. Um, but the human element makes sure that if there's ever a leak, it's through them. Because, you know, there's a steward who sees his wife standing outside. Ah, you know what, I open the gate quickly, you can walk in and without him realizing, someone else sneaks in who has bad intentions. So also there, uh, human factor. And it seems like I'm kicking in open doors here, but for some reason, uh, we don't have a solution for this yet, as it looks like. Um, and it could, of course, be that you know I say this, and you all think, like, OK, Maarten thinks it's, uh, it's, uh, the human factor is, is, is the weak factor. Who cares? And I might agree with you. The problem is that the hacker also sees it uh, like this. Uh, and to flatten this image a little bit more, um, we created a picture to show you what a hacker really has as a choice. So behind us, you see a hacker uh, who's uh, on his path to, to hack a company. And he's currently scratching his head. He's wondering, how do I enter this company? How do I obtain this data? Uh, and of course, he you know, has to walk a certain path to get to that data. So in reality, he has two paths. He can go to the left towards John, which is the information security officer, which is my role, of course. And you see John there with his, you know, his head on, his helmet, because he's, you know, he's ready. He, he's expecting that hacker. He knows he's going to come any moment now. He's, he's, he knows for sure the hacker is coming. So he has a weapon to, you know, okay, let's say shoot him in the, in the worst case, you know, if he's coming in. 
He put some barriers and a barbed wire to make sure that you know, there's obstacles for him to crawl in. There's a seam solution, the dog who barks the moment he sees something uh, which is an anomaly. Um, uh, there's a camera which monitors whatever he is doing, you know, so even if he comes in, he can still see later on what happened. And there's, of course, a wall he has to climb over or tie under, which, just for a good measure, he put on fire as well because it's a firewall. So once you climb all over all of these obstacles and once you bypass them all, you're finally at the company data, and then, of course, you still need to find a way to enter. But, you know, that's, of course, an easy trick if you manage to touch all of these things. So that's the path of the information security officer, which we, for now, will call John. So he can go to John, uh, or he can go to Jack. And Jack is on the right side. Um, he's the uh, marketing employee. And you see Jack, he's very satisfied with himself because he just made three other sales, and he's sitting behind his desk with his legs up his desk, and he's thinking, did a good job, and I'm waiting for my manager to come in so I can ask for a raise, because, of course, that's what is on his mind at the moment. He's not expecting a hacker. He's expecting his manager for the race. So he, you know, be, be comfortable. He put his badge and his keys on the desk. You can see it on the front because, you know, he's confident, he's happy, he's relaxed. Um, and the hacker sees that. So he can choose, do I go to the left towards John, climb over that firewall, or do I go to the right towards Jack? Um, and do I just ask, can I please borrow your keys for a little uh, moment? So I'm not a hacker, um, or I would not admit it here at least. Um, so. I would for sure, if I were a hacker, go to Jack, because I think he's by far the easier option to walk into that company door. Um, and you avoid the dog, and you avoid the camera, et cetera. So of course, this is a little bit of a, well, it's a very flattened down picture. And in reality, there's more options. And it's not as simple as this. But in reality, we see that this is um, uh, the option and the choice. And just to support this a little bit with statistics, you see that the data breach investigations report, which was mentioned before, uh, also shows this. Because in 82% of the cases, the human path is chosen, let's say. So the, the path towards Jack, which you can see again there. So in 82% of the cases, you see that the human element was involved in any type of breach. Um, stolen credentials, uh, phishing, uh, spoofing, uh, pretexting. You see all of the statistics here. So this shows that the hacker has that choice, and he makes his choice. Um, next to that, you can also see, indeed, that 66% of the cases, it was caused by, by phishing. So basically, just an email is sent, and that's it. You get your response back. So the option is not so, uh, so difficult. And the reason why I said that the presentation is aligned so well is because the lateral movement, of course, is an issue. Now, we mentioned it before with identity access management. Once you have access and you have privilege creep going on, and people have like a lot of access rights from the previous position, it's very easy to just move lateral and you know, obtain a lot of rights also if you hack that account. And that's why I think this picture is quite a strong analogy. And I promise afterwards I'll stop with the analogies. Um, you see all the different types of locks. So it looks very secure. You have a very big metal door with a big metal bar and metal pins and whatever. So this looks super secure. And of course, the padlocks also look like they're very strong. But if you consider in this analogy the padlocks to be human beings, you know, our employees with their MFA and with their, with their username password, they can unlock it. You want to avoid the one you unlock one of them, you unlock the entire door which is the case in this picture. So it looks secure, but you can pick any lock. It doesn't really matter which one, but let's, for good measure, pick, uh, pick this one. If you break it open, that pin slides out. You slide it on top, and the entire door is open. And that applies to any other, any other lock you see in this picture. So um, I think it just shows that you know, even though something looks secure from the outside, doesn't mean necessarily it's secure from, uh, from the design point of view. So um, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but um, a lease plan is more than just a car leasing company. We're also a bank. Uh, we have a banking license. We're under supervision by the European Central Bank. So um, we also get all the statistics in, let's say, from a banking point of view and all the security measures that they have in place and all the threats they recognize. So next to the data breach investigations report, we also see statistics from um, the Betaalvereniging, or the payment association, if you will. Uh, the Payment Asso Association did a research and they uh, discovered that uh, for banking, spoofing is by far the number one threat at the moment. So we see that a lot of people are being called saying, hey, this is, well, I already used John and Jack, but let's say John from uh, ABN, and we uh, just want to help you with uh, setting up your, uh, your account, or we just want to make sure that you know, we check if your transactions are valid. Can you please um, uh, you know, help us to make sure your account is, is safe again? Um, they do that through WhatsApp, call fraud, uh, smishing is a, is a close follow-up. So there's a lot of, let's say, oh, there's a lot of uh, um, um, well, attempts, let's say, to, to spoof people and especially customers. 
you see that over 5,000 websites a year per bank have to be taken down, which are fake websites. And I personally see it a lot for, for the bank as well, for Lease Plan Bank. There's like Lease Plan Bank and Lease Plan B and K, whatever, dot and L being created, which look exactly the same as ours, but they're phishing websites. They just are created by hackers. And it's a continuous, let's say, war to take them down, and they pop up again, and take them down, and pop up again. Um, so that's like a continuous job. Uh, and lastly, I think uh, good to mention that in research it was shown that 96% of the customers are compensated for the last day uh, actually occur during a hack or a spoof. So if you, let's say, 3,000 euros get stolen by you, because you're spoofed, um, the bank would just pay you back 3,000 saying, you know, sorry for, um, for your money loss, here's your money, uh, and we'll research it. But in reality, there are only losers in this story except for the customer, of course, because money is lost three double and the hacker is rich. So it shows how lucrative this business is. So it made me wonder, like, why is spoofing so successful? Well, there's a company called Secura who did a research on people who were spoofed, who were victims of, of spoof. Uh, and they checked with them, why did you actually fall for this? Because it sounds so obvious if you're being called, you, you, know, you, you double check if you're actually talking with your bank. Uh, and it showed that people uh, actually don't even check, um, the people who were spoofed at least, they don't even check who calls. They just saw on the phone they're being called. The only time they hang up is when it says anonymous because they apparently don't like that, but when it says a number, they don't even care if it's ABN or ING or just a random number. They presume, like, oh, we can call them back. So it feels legitimate. They picked up. And they were surprised how uh, friendly the people were on the other side of the line and how professional they were. They were not at all threatening. They were not using street language or broken Dutch or English. They were very friendly, customer-facing people who actually were very, you know, like uh, they, they really wanted to help. Uh, and also that's the, the last point you see, that they gave them a safe feeling. They literally were saying things, they, there were quotes where they said, hey, I just want to make sure, like, are you transacting, like, currently money from Iraq? Like, is that, is that what you're doing? And they're like, well, no, I'm not in Iraq. I'm in Amsterdam. And like, oh, well, well good that they called you then, because, you know, that's happening at the moment. Would you like me to, like, watch with you? Maybe you can install TeamViewer. We watch your bank account together, and we make sure it's secure. And people, and they're not always, like, old people or something. They're, like, a very, very common, let's say, um, uh, type of people who, who do this. They fall for it, because they just think, people have the best intentions with me. So that's, for me at least, was very interesting to see what, uh, what the spoofing victims, um, what, what type of people they were and what drove them to, let's say, fall for it. So uh, if, if you know all of these type of things, okay, that's, that's very sad, you could say, but what can we do about it? If you look at the data breach investigations uh, report again, they say, train, 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 and repeat. That's basically their conclusion, which I would s support, like I would probably do the same. But then it's surprising to see that in the statistics again, companies train on average three hours or less about information security. So this is from the, all the companies that were researched by, by the Daybeer, by Verizon. You see that a lot of people are even in the one minute. I'm not even sure how you do a one minute training, but it's uh, maybe TikTok videos or something, I'm not sure. Um, and in the middle, you see that there's like the average, let's say, is around three hours. Some are a week, some are even, I think it's, go, yeah, it's up to a week more or less. But that's by far, I would say, um, the outsider. So at least when we try to do it is different. And so far with all the negativity, now we're gonna go towards what we actually can do and what we're currently doing. And I'm not saying that Lease Plan invented the wheel, by far we didn't, but we did invent some sort of a wheel, uh, which is uh, the information security awareness uh, wheel. So what we did here is we made a, a, a monthly theme where we tried to address something so people could actually be, um, uh, well, avoids to have all the time saying, don't click on links, because they know this story by now, and they even get bored with it. If we tell them again, don't click, they're like, yeah, 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 we know. So every month we try to have some new theme, so I think this month, it's a bit reflecting, but I think this month is about uh, save public Wi-Fi, or, or avoid public Wi-Fi, that's coming month at least. Um, and we try to do a theme per month, and also a different approach per month. So not the e-learning, or not the me standing on top of a crate talk, but like tr try to do something different, something with posters, something with incentives, something with goodies, something with like an actual training or a test or a demo. Uh, we really try to do something new and every month a different team and it rotates so every year we have something, something else. And then in the, let's say if we do manage to do it one minute per time, we at least have 12 minutes uh, of training, which is uh, better than the, the average, I would say, um, if, if, we, um, if we keep on going like that every year. 
So every company, and I suppose you have the same, we do a, an annual uh, fire drill. So you know, you do something where you like check if are the vests still there? Do we still have uh, the fire extinguishers working, etc. With lease plan, we do the same, but then with ransomware. So we try to do a ransomware training where we just actually say, okay, let's now pretend like we have ransomware. Let's pull all the people inside and um, let's make some sort of scenario. Like I'm in a plane, you can't call me. Do we still know what to do? Or the servers are completely down. We don't know how to get it to our procedures. Do we still know where the physical copies are? Are they still up to date? Um, so it's, it's basically a fire drill, but then in, uh, let's say, for, uh, for malware and ransomware. So I think those are very, very valuable. Uh, and lastly, what we also tried to do, and I already mentioned it, like we tried to do something fun. Um, so, for instance, uh, escape rooms, where we try to have people escape uh, a room where you have to like find hidden passwords. And of course, everyone escapes because you know it's it's fun, and they are like, yeah, I managed to escape with with finding five passwords. And then we say, okay, you know that those passwords were hidden, right? And they're like, oh yeah, that's true actually. Like, maybe I should not hide my passwords anymore on the back of a note or on a post-it somewhere. And that's actually creating awareness. And there's also an element in there, which is a spoiler alert if you ever want to do this. There's a, a USB stick, and people think, oh, there's a password on it, and they click it in the machine, and then you lose time. Because then it's like, damn, I shouldn't have inserted this, this unknown USB stick. And I noticed that this works, because like months later, people come to me and say, like, I've never inserted an unknown USB stick anymore. Since I did this, like, I got penalized for this. I looked like a, well, let's not use that word here. Like, I looked dumb in front of my colleagues. Uh, so um, it actually works and it actually lives with people, it resonates with them. So I think these type of things really, really help. But again, we, we don't have the solution, we don't have the, the final answer. Um, but we're trying to look for one. So that's why Lease Plan Bank and ID Next are currently working together to uh, create a white paper where we research um, this topic. And um, I think we are trying to answer the question, like, how do we do it? Do we just uh, focus on um, uh, technology solely? Do we focus on training solely? Uh, what works, uh, what doesn't work? Uh, and of course, we have uh, the guest of uh, Dr. Goose, which was not known when I created this presentation, but um, uh, that's, that's actually, I think, one of the solutions with, uh, which, which can help people. So technology that supports people in uh, recognizing something that's, that might be fake. So now we're asking people, be aware if you get a video from your CEO, it might be a deep fake. But if I tell that now, you rem remember it, but in three months you forget it, you just get a video, like, ah, oh, cool, the CEO sent me a video. So I think that type of technology actually can help people to like, mark this as, hey, be aware, technology recognizes as something being fake, and it supports the people in their process, so we don't ask too much of them. Um, and of course, lastly, I say, what is the ideal solution? Again, I don't have it. Uh, we're working on, uh, on it together with, with IDNX to, to find a solution. Um, and hopefully uh, we'll find it and we can share it with you in the next time we're here. And with that, I would like to round up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Martin. Let's see if there are uh, any questions for you from the audience. It's all clear. It was all clear. Perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> and otherwise, of course, as we said, oh, there's one question. That's good to see. Yeah. I come over to you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Some really good uh, uh, ideas and so. And I really caught on to your escape room idea. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else is doing escape rooms, but it's a fascinating. Uh, you're, you're pretty much trying to escape, but using that in secure training. Do you have any pointers? Anything uh, you know existing on that? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I also tried to create something myself a little bit more so we can like use it in the company. So currently, I just use it in company, but at some point, I might also share it like indeed as, as best practices. But for now, indeed, the idea is that we really try to like when I see something in my company, for instance, I literally saw someone who had like their passwords on the last page of the notepad, which I think a lot of people do, but they might not admit. And I saw it and I was like thinking, how can I make sure they don't? So I first told them. And then three months later, I still saw her like flipping through and it's like, OK, this doesn't work. So then I included it in this escape room. And the same with the USB stick, like these type of things. Yeah, they resonate. And then when you're in front of your colleagues, then for some reason people like they, they feel like, oh damn, like I did it in front of everyone. Like so that I think and honestly that person hadn't hadn't used her notepad afterwards anymore. So it worked. Okay, thank you, uh, Marta, yeah, for welcome. your presentation.